I don't think I've got any space for stuff, do I know? Gold ring. Agility one. Agility two, stamina plus 18. Minus protect two, minus mana one. Yeah, I'll take that. But that one's, I, I feel it like, honestly, like that's like a, a no brainer to wear. This one obviously has a bit of a drawback. Party management. Yeah, okay. Alright, cool. So go through here and all the way up. Okay, okay. I thought I was... I was trying to figure out how do I get to the top end of the map. And I was trying to do the uh, the, the mouse scroll, but it wouldn't... It was just going through all this stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I killed everything. So I'm hoping not to be accosted. Okay, so up, right. Guard waits casually for Citrani at the entrance. Have collected your desert suit and rebreathe the mask, clerk. Yes, let's go. You Citrani. A youngster donning the same garbs as the clerk, another of Brown Leaf's assistants probably, is running to him as he and the guard climb the cowwalk up from the underroots. This letter's for you from the counselor. Compose yourself, apprentice. I can't hear you amongst the panting. Then, Citrani quickly snatches the note, the letter of credit he was promised. Why are you meeting us here, noob? I expect the counselor wanted to hear about my findings in the underroots. Hey, look at me, I'm a VIP. The boy looks at the club with distaste, distaste, then recites, Counselor Smith regrets not being able to listen to the report of the undoubtedly heroic adventures of the clerk, etc., but he is busy with most important, with more, m with most important? Maybe with more important? With most important foreigners. That I need to attend for sure. I'm a most important clerk. Actually, not that I know. And you're required to go prepare for your mission out of the wall. Imagine all the reports of amazing adventures you will tell. If you ever get back alive, that is. The boy scampers away on a thin rope bridge pausing just once in its middle to turn back and mockingly show his tongue to the companions. Youngsters, worse than bugs on trees and no respect at all. Resuming all his professional pomp and gravity, the clerk opens the note and scrolls through it, avidly searching for the numbers. He fails to suppress disappointment when he finds them, cheapskates. With less money to spend than what he had hoped for, the clerk considers what to do. Spent all day at the different marketing stalls myself, haggling and talking with sellers, or to task the guard with purchasing the items he thinks best for the journey based on his experience outside the dome. Let me think more. Give me long dialogues. I'm not in a hurry. I want to do the, the long dialogues, but I want to see if there's like a save point. Give me long dialogues. I'm not in a hurry. Achievement unlocked, big spender. Citroni so finds himself again at the crossroads of the marketplace, considering where to go next. Okay, this game's starting to open up a little bit. Now, if I press F5 for that quick save, it absolutely will not. All right, so considering what we need to do, I figure that we need to sell off some of the stuff that we've gotten. So I think the first stop will be the trading goods store. There's a sweet smell of fruits all along the alley. Well, here are the banquets of vegetable vendors selling the fruit products that the sandy land inside the dome lets them cultivate. 
Uh, Citrani strides to the general food store, if only to get out of the rotting stench coming from a basket of pest-infested tomatoes. Hi, handsome. Are you looking for some great bargain? The young woman throws a little balanced knife in the air, then deftly grabs it in mid-rotation, the blade pointing to Citrani. That's hot. I have a still perfectly usable rusty pipe for a fun time bashing rats and possibly giving them tendinitis, a nasty shank, and even a pretty neat couple of sand slippers. Ooh, I'd say we want the slippers, yeah? Made with care by slave workers for our customer satisfaction. Be advised that the city of Pantella frowns upon slavery and upon its competitive city's working conditions. Alright. Okay, now remember, like, we've been given limited funds. I have knives. Got a shield. I just, um, got some slippers that I think is going to be better. Um, the desert suit, got the desert suit. Maybe, um, maybe I can look at every single one of these. How about the glass master's alley? I feel that like that's um magic. But this could be magic as well. Let's let's look at this. I think this is like you know accessories. Don't touch anything, alright? Damn, I get that city. Sp I get that the city spells must be tended, but don't you dare stomp in here with your requisition list of activators. You take something, you pay for it. Hey, I'm not here to commandeer anything for the city. A stunned look on his face, but the apothecary searches on. Oh, really? Are you telling me that you'll actually pay me? No, I'll commandeer them for myself. It's written here on this council letter. So Trani shoves the note on the apothecary's eyes, all life draining away from them and leaving mourning in its wake. It looked too good to be true. However, this here says I am to give you value corresponding only to the remaining credit. Just so we are clear. So what? What can I afford still? Well, I have something to eat, basically. Some bits good for static electricity and some for water manipulation. There may be side uses too. I have one fruit of a bedroom. Da, 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 da. Ha. Cable? probably gonna give me some like some line about like you don't have room in your inventory I think like the electric cable's gonna be good yeah ah excellent choice here now go away please just touching the cable, Citroni is rushed by a feeling of warmth, which he suddenly grits when he gets out of when he gets out under the suns. Or whatever. Not quite sure what happened there. Citroni is looking over his shoulder to the guard, training with difficulty on the net of branches that take to the that take him to the woodworker's perch. Places just above the rest of the city, even higher than the councilmen's houses, amidst the younger and greener branches of Kinami. The clerk grins at the awkwardness of his companion, but that's only a short distraction. The scorched plains that Satrani now can clearly see extending in all directions from the dome cloud his amusement. Soon he'll have to travel there. Indeed. What's with the face, boy? Knotty hands work on a piece of wood coaxing it to bend, more than forcing it with tools. I came to say goodbye, Tom. I have to go out to the desert. The man puts down the wood. That's reason enough for a long face, okay. So I imagine you are looking for gear, or are you just here to waste the day wa uh, watching down 
waste the day watching down? Are you just here to waste the day watching down at the city from my perch? The latter, I'm afraid. I've spent all of the council credit already. Okay, shit, well. I'm fine with it. I needed boots. Tom laughs. Well then, I suppose I wouldn't have been able to provide what you need to survive there anyway. Feel free to rest for a while on the branch there. Best vista of the whole city. That said, the woodworker gets back to his work. And Satrani does indeed... Doom, as he was suggested. Only now the guard arrives, panting on the perch, just in time for them to get back to the marketplace again. So I think I've like exhausted all the options to buy shit, but I am still going to go to the Emperor, so yep. In this part of the Katami tree, safely away from the masses of wood, from the mass of wood, are the furnaces that provide for the glass used to maintain the dome, which is in fact continuously degraded by the great winds. Interesting. Out of the way, you pissant. Can't you see I'm working? The glass master gives less than a glance and a snort in Citrani's general direction. Oh, I know. Uh, okay, so... Sure. Flattery. But... Res no, I don't think they just respond well to flattery. How about this? Ah, uh, no. Well, I am, in fact, and if you don't want to help by throwing yourself into the furnace, kindly go about your business elsewhere. Citronic considers for a moment the opportunity to use a sun attack of Pyromania as an excuse to delay his desert trip, but quickly reconsiders and tracks back to the mic and place the board guard on his tail. Alright. Can I go back there? You again. Da, 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 da. You again. I don't care what kind of official business you are to perform, but with the scheduled maintenance of the dome, I have not the time nor the patience. Glassmaster scrutinizes the guard, who shrugs. Both of them could make without Citrani's antics. As the glassmaster dives back into his forge, the clerk is left wondering who he should annoy next. Alright. So that was a one time thing. Alright, um, sure. Oh, a customer. What I can interest you in? Come on, the, the spelling errors are really shitting me at this point. What can I interest you in, sir? Maybe some newly found decrepit yet perfectly usable water faucet? Like, where are the commas? Freshly painted, almost whole free bucket? Some of my trademarked one hit hammers? Only the most recent oldies around the tree find their ways to my cozy shop. Feel free to rest. You seem pretty cheerful today, Junk Master. What gives? Just a good deal with another customer, is all. Can I be blessed to make a good part with you, sir, too? Oh, you wound me, sir. I have only certifiable, freshly recovered, almost new objects that the desert is generous enough to unveil and to let me have. I'm a conscientious dealer. Anyway, I have a line of credit and my arm next door. Recovering quickly from the lost chance of barter, the merchant continues. Council credit is good too. Always better to be on the brown leaf's good side, I suppose. What can I interest you in? Well, what do you have? First, a simple formality, the merchant says, inquiring with the guard for the clerk's means to pay. I have nothing. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that you were a serious bias, but your credit amount... Your credit's... Your credits amount? I mean, sure. But your credit amount, your credits amount informs me that's not the case. I suggest you come back when you will have the means to afford my treasures. If mummified socks can be considered treasure. With that, Thomas shoves the clerk and the guard out the door. The two men decide to just get back to the market. Well then. Paul's common room. This common house is not the closest to Marginov's Gate, which is the larger access to the city from the desert, but it is the larger one in the lower city. Nested at some distance from Kinami, it is usually the most crowded one too, due to the thick brown liquid sapped from the smaller root of the two. Kumi, 
as it's called, which is the base for an appreciated quality of brew. Today though, the room looks almost empty. A man with a thin, sickly scar gives a nervous nod to Citrani. Hello, Mikhail. How's business, cousin? It's a riot, don't you see? Yeah, all fun and games. Where is everyone? Mmm. No, seriously. Looking around idly in the large room, fixing on nobody in particular, Mikhail sighs slowly. I suppose you, of anybody, should know it is not the best of times to apply for a position in the council. Hmm? What do you mean? Because you have to take out your head out of the clouds. Because you have to take out your head out of the clouds. Because like... you have to take your head out of the clouds? Two poor harvests. The loss of the caravans of the raiders. We're this close to kicking the bucket. For the people, someone has to take the blame for that. It distracts them from the starving. Yeah. This this game seriously like needs because I mean the text that's what draws you in, right? But if it is littered with multiple grammatical and spelling errors, it just takes you right out. It really does. And they really need to work on that. But they won't. They won't. Ah, brown leaves had their best man on the lost caravans case. Suit yourself, kid, but understand it's not all fun and games. With all your garb and your guard, only a thin glass dome separates us from hell and the reserves of food have thinned these last ten years. Ah, that's old man talk. Hey kiddo, the gorgeous tavern maid brushes a hand on the cloaked chin. Don't you let that mope of your cousin ruin your cheer. You know how he is when the regulars are not here to drink their pay. Hello. Conalabeth? Conalabeth? Would you marry me? Tempting, but I've had my share of councilmen already, and steady affairs are not so exciting. Mikhail raises the brow, drying the glasses on the stool with a dirty rag. Yeah, sure, affairs. The maid laughs softly. Don't be jealous, Mick. You know you're my favourite. Then hushing her tone. But you know, Set, you should actually be careful these days. I am, I am. Full of care, I use precautions. Both Connie and Mikhail look intensely at some invisible insect at the ceiling. The insect is really interesting, probably. So, the clerk and the guard decide to give it the time to be properly studied and backtrack to the mark. Very awkwardly written. Alright, uh, we've gone through everything. This is it. The sounds and the sights become fewer and fewer. The voices turn to a hush with each step towards the glass wall. There's less people around and wary, suspicious eyes that never linger on a face. Marjanov's gate stands tall and proud in the suns, with its three foot of Kinami's hardened wood separating the city from the never ending desert. Okay, so glass and uh, the wood. This is the gate. Continue. The guards at the gate seem to be more jumpy than usual. Whether for what is outside or for what is inside the dome, that's anybody's guess. Well, clerk, are you ready to get out? Doesn't matter. I should do this nevertheless. Open the gate. F5. Instantly saving that shit. And with that, we are ending the game. For now. All right, we finally killed. Yeah, we finally cleared the tutorial dungeon. That's an achievement all in itself. <laughs>